united with Christ. Meet local churches with open doors serving throughout the Border Valley community and sharing the truth and hope of God's love and salvation. A presentation of Life Christian Broadcasting Television. And now, United with Christ. Shalom, everyone. Uh, my name is Rabbi Elliot Haas, and uh, our ministry is Kol Haruach Messianic Fellowship. We meet on uh, the west side of El Paso, Texas, and we meet on uh, Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Uh, we we uh, use uh, Koinonia Fellowship Church. They allow us to meet there, and... Uh, Anyhow, we are there, and uh, it's on 1060 Donovan Park Circle, and you're welcome to come and visit with us. If you would like to get further information and details of the teachings that I'll be, that I'll be presenting here, just send an email to kolharuach at gmail.com. Don't be frightened by that ruach, okay? <laughs> kolharuach is spelled K-O-L-H-A. R-U-A-C-H at gmail.com. Now, over the next weeks, we're going to be going over the fall festivals, okay? At the time that we're recording this, it's a little bit before the fall festivals, but I'm going to give you an understanding, and as these are brought forth, you'll be able to have an understanding of the current times and seasons that we're in, which are the fall festivals. Uh, God has a calendar. And as believers, we need to understand that calendar because it's really about our salvation, our belief uh, in, in Yeshua and our, our faith in Jesus, the Messiah. So I have to give you a little bit of a background, okay? Because all the festivals are tied together, okay? There's the, the spring festivals that you all know about, uh, the Passover, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of Bikurim, or the First Fruits, which is what many call Easter, but is really uh, the, you know, it's Resurrection Day, okay, the day of Yeshua's resurrection. But it's also, in ancient times, it was another day called Bikurim, First Fruits, okay. And then, uh, so we have Unleavened Bread, or the Feast of Matzah, and that's for seven days, okay. And then, uh, about 50 days from the from the Bikarim or the first fruits, it's it's Shavuot or Pentecost. Okay, Pentecost was not just in the Book of Acts. There was a Pentecost also in the Hebrew Scriptures. Okay, and and that was when God came down upon Mount, Mount Sinai with fire and He betrothed Israel. Okay, and for 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 us or when we think about Pentecost, we think about what happened in the in, in the book of Acts. And yes, God was taking every person who would believe in him and betrothing them as well. And here's what's exciting. All the spring festival festivals are about the first coming of Messiah, but the fall festivals that we're going to be talking about are about the second coming of Messiah. Okay, and they're prophetic. They haven't been fulfilled yet. So uh, hopefully you'll get, you'll get more of an understanding of these festivals, okay? But each, each of the calendar is about our salvation. It, Yeshua brought our salvation on Passover, okay? He took our sins away. That's what unleavened bread represents. And uh, when we get a mikvah or a baptism, it's symbolic of dying to ourselves and, and being raised in, in the resurrection power to Yeshua, okay, to, to Jesus. Okay, so all these are symbolic uh, as... He died and he was resurrected. So our whole lives are intertwined with this calendar. The way of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, Ruach HaKodesh, is also, it, you know, that's a part of our lives, okay? Our, that's about all about our salvation, okay? And then, of course, the baptism of the Spirit is what happens to us when we receive the power and the anointing of God for ministry, and that goes to Pentecost. That goes to when the first outpouring occurred. The first big outpouring of the Spirit occurred in the book of Acts. Okay, so now let's move on. Because in between the spring festivals over the summer, there's, it's called a wilderness time. 
for three months. There's a, a time, and it's symbolic of the 40 years Israel wandered in a wilderness. But it's also a time of harvest. During the year on the ancient calendar, the agriculture calendar, that was the time of the harvesting. Okay, And so the, the whole church has been in a perpetual time of harvest. However, it's about to transition into a new time. And we're getting close to the end and the coming of our Lord. Okay, But what I want to share you know, about is that fourth month. There's actually four months of the harvest. And there, there's, there's like four months of the in-between time before Rosh Hashanah comes. Okay, Yom Teruah is also the name of Rosh Hashanah. Actually, some people don't even like to say Rosh Hashanah because God changed the calendar in Exodus 12. And uh, that would be a little bit too much to explain at this point, but I'll just tell you that the calendar that we're using right now, that that the seventh month is now this, that this these festivals fall in the seventh month when it used to be the first month, okay? It's not tricky, it's not hard. You don't need to know, you know, heavy math to understand this. But God wants us to search him out, to know him, Okay, to understand him, to know and understand him. That's all we're here for. And you know what? The hunger and thirst never stops. The desire and the desperation for him should never stop. And always wanting to know more. Okay. You know, Moses, he saw God and, and he saw all the miracles that happened with the parting of the sea and the plagues in Egypt and, and the miracles, even Mount Sinai. And yet he said, I want to see all your glory. And that's my heart. And that's, that's our desire is to see not just the physical things of, of the scriptures, not just the physical festivals, but to experience them in the heart, to be transformed, to be going from glory to glory, to experience his glory. Okay. So let's just quickly, as a setup for the fall festivals, let's quickly talk about the glory and the glorious fourth month, because after the wilderness, or I should say at towards the end of the harvest, there's this month, it's, called, it's the sixth month, it's called Elul, okay, Elul. I, I have a picture here in Hebrew, okay. Uh, Elul is Ani Lidodi Vidodi Li. I am my beloved, and my beloved is mine. Okay, that's the name of the month. It comes off of the first letters in the Hebrew of, of that, um, of Anil Adodi Vidodi Li, which is from the Song of Solomon, or the Song of Songs, six, chapter 6, verse 3. Okay, and it, it's God's love. It, I call it the love month. <laughs> okay, so, so, you know, you have, you have, um, there's a, it's important to understand that during this month, it's like a month of bridal preparation. It's like we're getting ready for the coming of the Lord, for the coming of the groom. And all of us who believe in Yeshua are a bride, okay? But you know what? We need to learn how to be a bride and behave like a bride and be ready as a bride for the groom. And remember what Yeshua taught us about the ten virgins, okay? Five were foolish, but five were wise, and they were waiting for the groom to come, the bridegroom, okay? Yeshua, Jesus. Okay, so this is all preparation, a whole month of preparation. There's, an, there's another thing that happens in the month of Elul. It's called Teshuvah, or repentance. It's a season of repentance. It's a, a time period where we're looking inward, not like God says, you have to look and change. We choose with our free will to do whatever it takes to get every spot and blemish out of us that is holding us back, that is holding us back from becoming a bride. Where do we, where do we lack the hunger and thirst? Where do we lack the desperation for him? Okay, this is what we're looking at, okay? Whatever sin is in our lives, let's deal with it. Let's get it out of the way. And ask us God's forgiveness. He is faithful and just to forgive us of all of our sins when we confess it to him. Okay, so it's a time of teshuvah, or that's the Hebrew way of saying repentance. Return, 
Return back to your first love. How many times do we see that in the scriptures? Well, what is, remember this month, Anila Dodi Vidodi Li? The month of Elul, okay, is a bridal month. Return to your first love, okay, because he's coming. The bridegroom is coming, and he's going to get his bride. But he's not just going for the ordinary, average, religious person. In fact, he really doesn't care about that. He cares, are they in relationship with me? Are they shining like I shine? Are they in my glory like I am in my Father's glory? Okay, listen, we're coming to a great time, okay? You know, one other thing that happens in a, in a lull is you blow the shofar every day, every morning, okay? And, it, and in that, it's also a time of warning because when Messiah comes to get his bride, he's going to pour out his wrath on the earth, okay? And it's to warn people. So you bring people in, okay, into the kingdom. You're harvesting, too, at this time. The final harvests are coming in. And, and it's, it's salvation. I mean, it's people getting saved so they don't have to go through, you know, God's wrath when he pours it out. He only pours out his wrath upon the wicked. He has not appointed his people to wrath. Okay, so, you know, knowing that, the shofar is blown every day, so we're all like watchmen. We read Ezekiel 33, 1 to 20, and Psalm 27 almost every day. Uh, so that way we're reminded. Ezekiel 33, 1 to 20 is all about the watchmen, okay? It's all about warning of the impending judgment. And, you know, so we, we have, the, there's a lot going on to prepare us for the, the fall festivals, which are all prophetic. And if you want proof that they're all prophetic, just read Colossians 2. 16 and 17, God is speaking to the Gentiles in Colossia who are believers, and he's telling them that no man judge you regard to food, uh, drink, uh, regards to festival, new moon, or Sabbath. Probably not in that order. Uh, for they are a shadow of things to come. But the person, and I'm saying it this way, the person cast in the shadow is Messiah. So all the festivals and everything are a shadow of Messiah. So let's get to know Messiah a little bit in these fall festivals. And let us rehearse. Another, another way of saying appointed times, or actually not appointed times, is Moedim. But also holy gatherings, Mikrai Kodesh. Holy gatherings. It's these holy rehearsals of what is to come because it is prophetic. So we'll talk about about uh, what is Rosh Hashanah, okay? Rosh Hashanah is the beginning of the year. It just means the head of the year. So it's like another a Jewish way or the Hebrew way of saying New Year, okay? <laughs> it's the New Year, Rosh Hashanah. However, in the Bible, in the book of Leviticus, it doesn't exactly say the New Year on the, on the first day of the seventh month. Okay, but it originally was the new year. Okay, now the new year is the month that has Passover on it, the month of Aviv, or some call it Nisan. Okay, and uh, but it's also there's two new years. Okay, now I, I don't have time to explain this right now to you. Okay, God changed the calendars around, but both new years are still valid. For the whole world, <laughs> okay. But we're going to talk about the one in the fall right now, which has now become the seventh month. So let's not talk as much about the new year, but let's talk about the other name for Rosh Hashanah of the seventh month. And the other name is Yom Teruah, okay. And the name Yom Teruah means Day of the Awakening Blast, okay. Now, I say awakening blast. That should get everybody excited because, because it says in the scriptures that when Messiah comes, the apostle Paul said he will come at the last trump. Well, that's a term for Rosh Hashanah Yom Teruah, the last trump. The awakening blast where the dead will rise and we who are alive will be changed. Okay, that's Rosh Hashanah Yom Teruah. Now you might say, well, brother, uh, it says in the scriptures that um, we, no man knows the day or the hour. Well, that's been quite misunderstood, okay? I'm not telling you 
that I know the day that the Lord's coming, okay? I'm telling you that I know when, okay? <laughs> okay, you might think, well, that's contradictory. Not really, okay, because we don't know the year. <laughs> we don't know the year, but we do know, in fact, the day, okay? You know, God has a plan, okay? It's a 7,000-year plan for time. After the 7,000 years is up, there's not going to be any more time. It's going to be eternity, okay? So 6,000 years, and then Rosh Hashanah comes, Yom Teruah, and the dead of Messiah arise, and we who are alive will be changed. So uh, the, they get this whole idea of no man knows the day. You know, Yeshua said, no man knows the day or the hour. Therefore, watch. Be on the alert. Well, here, here's the key. The word for watch, be on the alert, one of the Hebrew words for it, it before they came up with the Greek words, okay, is shamar, okay, or sh shamartin. We get the Samaritans uh, from, the, from this word, from this Hebrew word, shamar, okay, that's the root word, okay. And it actually means to be found observant. Observant of what? His times and his seasons. Uh, he tells the Thessalonians, okay, that day is not going to overtake you like a thief. You know, remember, Yeshua said, you don't know the day or the hour, and you better watch. You better on the alert, you know, that that day doesn't overtake you like a thief. And here comes later on the Apostle Paul saying, that you, Thessalonians, that day is not going to overtake you because you know the times and the seasons. So what does that tell you? Knowing the times and seasons is going to help us to not be taken by surprise, to not be stolen from, okay? So, uh, so it's important to understand. Zechariah 14, 7 says, this day, and he's talking about the day of the Lord, not the day of Yeshua's return, a 24-hour day, but the day of the Lord, which is a 1,000-year day. A day is as 1,000 years in Psalm 90, verse 4. In 2 Peter 3, verse 8. A day is as 1,000 years. A 1,000 years is as a day. Okay? So there's going to be a 1,000-year kingdom coming. There's going to be a 1,000-year millennial reign of Messiah, of Christ. Okay? And that's what we're waiting for, the coming of the day of the Lord. But when it starts, it's not going to be very pleasant. It's going to start off first. He's going to take his bride out of here. And that's in, in 1 Thessalonians, I believe, chapter 5. The, the, that the Messiah, the false Messiah will come. And when the, it says here that this resurrection will occur there prior, right after the revealing of the false Messiah. Okay. So, you know, this is the very, some very basics about Rosh Hashanah Yom Teruah. Okay. We're getting ready for the return of the Lord. And we have to be aware of his times and seasons to be ready. Okay, so that they will not overtake us like a thief. Okay, so, so you know, bringing this all down. Okay, so I told you about Zechariah 14.7 uh, and, and, and where they get. And it's, it's talking about the coming of the day of the Lord. And it says, the whole 1,000-year day, only known to the Father, only known to Jehovah is his name. Okay, only known to God. And, and that's what Yeshua was talking about. It's a day only known to him. Not a 24-hour day, a 1,000-year day. You can't know everything that's going to go on in a 1,000-year day, okay? Only the Father knows, okay? So I, I know I'm saying some things that are controversial. There's another thing about it, too. One of the titles for Rosh Hashanah, Yom Teruah, is the day that no man knows the day or the hour. Why? Because the moon is concealed, and until that little sliver appears, then you don't know the hour it begins, the, the, the month. This is every month, by the way. But there's only one festival that falls, one of the God's appointed times that falls on a new moon. And it's Rosh Hashanah Yom Teruah. Okay? So we know when Yeshua told us that nobody knows the day or the hour, he was actually probably alluding to the feast of Rosh Hashanah Yom Teruah, okay? So, so in reality, he was telling us when he was coming on Rosh Hashanah Yom Teruah. Now, I don't mean coming to the earth. I mean coming for his bride, where we meet him in the air, 
Okay, we're going to be talking about other festivals in the coming weeks and talk about his physical coming to the earth because even his physical coming to the earth is in the festivals, okay? And also his establishing his kingdom on the earth is in these fall festivals. Okay, so, so getting back to this, okay, we have so many scriptures that says, that talks about in that day, of that day, it's telling us something about that 1,000 year kingdom that's coming, okay? So, uh, you know, th there's lots of scriptures that talk about this. Okay, so, you know, if you have any questions about it, just let me know. Uh, you know, contact us again at koharoach at gmail.com, which I gave you at the beginning of this. Okay, if you have any further questions about it. Okay, let's talk about the first days and the last days. You might say, okay, now what is he talking about? Okay, well, think about it. Remember I told you there's a 7,000-year plan of God. For time, okay? Well, think of it as the week. Every single week when we celebrate the Shabbat, we're rehearsing the coming of the kingdom of God. Okay, so, so you know, that's why we blow the shofar. That's like we're rehearsing the coming of the Lord when, when the shofar is blown, the archangel Michael sounds off the shofar and the dead of Messiah arise. Every week when we blow the, sho when we blow the shofar on Shabbat, on the Sabbath, we are rehearsing the coming of the kingdom. And it's like the kingdom is in every week. That one day, even when God gave us the days of the week, at the very beginning, he created on the six days. He said, and there was evening and morning the first day, second day, all the way through the sixth. But on the seventh, he said, I, he sanctified it. And there was no evening and morning. It's like a timeless day, symbolic of the kingdom and symbolic of eternity. Okay, so... The beginning of this eternal day, this actual kingdom day, is going to be on a Rosh Hashanah, on a, on a Yom Teruah, the day of the awakening blast of the shofar. Okay? So we need to understand a little bit about the shofar, and we need to understand a little bit more about all the other themes that are connected to Rosh Hashanah, okay? Uh, which we'll probably, in, in the next, next program, get more into. Okay, so we have the, this, uh, this time period, the 7,000 year period. And if, if you think of it like a week, the first days of the week is like Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday we call hump day. <laughs> okay, halfway through it, you begin the last days of the week. Well, that's the way it is. We've been talking about the last days for a long time. Do you know that the last days actually started 500 years before Yeshua came? Before Jesus came. Okay, so, so you know, being that that's the case, okay, we, we need to think about, okay, if it's been in the last days, that means there's a lot of things in the Bible about the last days, and it's telling us the details of what's going to happen, even in the days that we're living. Uh, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end off this section of Rosh Hashanah about... Uh, you know, and I'm just going to share this with you. God is coming for a glorious church. Messiah is coming for a glorious bride, okay? His glory is going to fill the earth as the waters cover the sea. He swore it by his own name, okay? That's what Elul is about that I started with, okay? He's getting us ready. This glory is going to come and the shofar is going to sound, okay? Well, we have a president who has been removed, okay, that he... he the thief came and stole it from him. But it's going to be restored, and he is like a trumpet. Well, he's a trump, okay? So he's like a shofar blast, and God is going to use him. He's just a man, but he's a catalyst for the great move of God, the glory that's coming to prepare the body of Messiah for the fall festivals, or you could say the coming of the Lord, okay? The ultimate fulfillment, okay? So, uh, you know, so, so we have this. I, I hope I gave you some understanding here, a little bit about the day of the, of the Lord, okay, that it's a 1,000-year day, and that it kicks off with the gathering of the believers, okay, who are already glorified, who have already been in a, this time of glory that's going to come upon the earth, this Elul time of glory, this Ani Ladoti, the Dodi Li glory that's coming, okay, I am my beloved, and my beloved is mine, so that we could be ready for the Lord, okay, and his appearing, okay. 
We were made to shine on the darkness. The people of God, the true bride of God who love him with all their heart, soul, and strength and love their neighbor as themselves. Okay? We've been, we've been being prepared for this time. Because during this time, anything and everything can happen. It'll be like uh, the kingdom will be coming to the earth. The glory will be filling the earth. There'll be healing taking place on a massive scale. Miracles, signs, and wonders. And, and the people of God will shine brightly and they will become the bride. And, and, and then Messiah will come and take her because he says, that's my beautiful bride that I'm looking forward to. So, you know, to beware of the thief, to beware of the plans of the enemy, okay? Keep your eyes out, okay? Because, you know, and how do you keep your eyes out? By following God's calendar that he has. It's for all of us, his calendar, okay? Uh, you know, God desires for us to be, to walk with him in holiness. And he gave us his Torah, his five books of instructions, and they're all about Yeshua. They're all about Jesus, every Torah portion throughout the year. Okay, so God wants us to walk and be on the alert, be on the watch. And how do we do that? By living according to God's righteous standard. Okay, we are in the Akhari Yamin. We're in the last days. Okay, so it's really important for us to be ready. The last days, I know it's been like since 500 years before Yeshua, but we're coming to the last of the last of the days. So next, next time we will get into five themes of Rosh Hashanah, Yom Teruah, and, and we'll talk about a little bit more maybe about the shofar, and then we'll get, into, we'll get into the other festivals. So I hope you enjoy this, and I hope it touches you, and I hope it changes you. God is so good. He's so wonderful. He is so holy. He is so perfect. We are so flawed. We are like dust. We are like the grass that withers and the flower that fades. But yet, all of his goodness can function in us. Any goodness we have is from him. And we must always remember that there's no goodness in us. All of our goodness is from him. So I just want you to be blessed. I want you to have a wonderful Rosh Hashanah celebration. And I hope you enjoy what, what God is doing. Don't let the COVID scare you. Have no fear. God is here. Hallelujah. Shalom and peace be with you. Shalom Alechem. And Chag Sameach and Leshana Tova. Have a good year. Be, be sealed for a good year.